Jorge Masvidal makes some very telling points when he mentions, hey, uh, you know this Burns guy, he's a little bit of a wild man and he's not the greatest wrestler in the world. And all I do every day at ATT is I, I go against wrestlers and I practice my takedown defense. Gilbert Burns is no Kamar Usman, right? However, this dude has a relentlessness that was able to take a scary guy like Kamzat Chemaev and force him not to be able to shoot really over the course of three rounds. So that should, I feel like that should strike fear in your heart right there. But that's the thing. Masvidal says, if I could keep this fight standing, baby, Burns is in trouble. And you have to agree with him. You have to. This is the only thing, man. And I don't want to be a hater, per se, right here. But Jorge Masvidal is not the spryest, youngest version of himself, man. This man is 38 years old. You know what I mean? So I'm sure he still has all of the skill, all of the sharpness that we've seen over the years. But the reality is, can you do it for 15 hard-fought minutes where Burns is in your face the entire time? That might be a good thing for Masvidal. But do you think he has that same step that even we saw in the Darren Till fight all those years ago? I think yes, Derek. I, I don't think the the step or the skill set has necessarily gone away. Maybe it's dulled a little bit. Maybe it needs a little bit of shine. We can see that even in the uh, the the initial pictures of Jorge, a lot of people on Twitter, they're saying, man, what happened? This dude used to be cut. Now he's looking a little older. I mean, yeah, he is 38. And mm -hmm. but you can never put you can never put that against him because Jorge Masvidal is very very dangerous at all times. Mm -hmm. How it's it's hard, Derek, because I'm a massive Jorge Masvidal fan, but I have so many pros for Gilbert going into this one because I mm -hmm. just think he's hungrier. I think yeah. he's in there grinding more. I think he's in there consistently looking at what's going to happen. Where Jorge he's waking up in silk sheets, and we all know the saying, man, it's hard to go get the jog in. But I don't know because you can never you can never count out the dude that has the fastest knockout in UFC history, and is down to scrap at any point ever allegedly. But, yeah, you know, but. <laughs> allegedly, right? Like maybe that's <laughs> the thing. Maybe we need to save it for the cage. No, I'm just joking, man. You gotta love you some game bread Masvidal. But let's take a, a a tale of the tape, I guess you should say, right? Last win for Jorge Masvidal was a stoppage uh, victory against Nate Diaz, right? No longer in the UFC. The win before that, Ben Askren, fastest KO. No longer in the UFC. Darren Till, knocked out. No longer in the UFC. It's not really ringing too well for you as time goes on. For Gilbert Burns, he ragdolled Neil Magny in his last fight. He did lose to Hamza Chemaev. That was a kind of a close fight, though, right? Before that one, he did... It's almost a similar matchup, man. He ragdolled Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. But that was in that stage of fights where Thompson was just getting taken down by everybody. So it's mm -hmm. like, George Masvidal, you know that, that, that the takedown defense might be a little bit, you know... Whatever the case may be. Other than that, man, he has a win over, uh, what, Tyron Woodley? A loss to Kamaru Usman. Both of these dudes are fighting cream of the crop competition. The only difference is Masvidal fought wrestlers three fights in a row and lost all, lost all three of them. Got knocked out in one of them, right? So the million-dollar question here, man. Can Gilbert Burns take down Jorge Masvidal? And if he does and avoid getting his face kneed off in the process, what round does it happen? Yes, round two. You know, you can't have the explosiveness of a Jorge Masvidal take you by surprise, like mm -hmm. like Ben Askren or like mm -hmm. a lot of other, even even there until the sharpness that Jorge presents is always a dangerous. So you got to have him, you got to take advantage of the slowing down nature that everybody has in the second round when it now becomes a chess match instead of just a dog fight. You don't want to dog fight Jorge Masvidal. You're absolutely right. And then Masvidal is also true, man. I don't know if you looked at statistics, but Gilbert Burns does have a career takedown accuracy of 35 percent um and masvidal's takedown defense is 74 percent over the span of his ufc career man so this is like the number on paper you it does really look like this is going to be a lot closer than people are aiming it out to be so let's talk about it minus 440 was the open for gilbert burns they're they're not really respecting masvidal and i get it a couple losses right but the reality is on the feet you have to admit burns is a little bit of a wild man there's a lot of winging shots not a lot of straight shots down the pipe let's not forget he got dropped by a jab from Kamar Usman. Masvidal lands one of his signature shots, bro. You could, you could, you know what I mean? Put him in the same spot. Only difference is, will he be able to, this is the question, will he be able to jump in the guard to finish the job against a Gilbert Burns, who is a black belt jiu-jitsu practitioner, not only does regular jiu-jitsu, but like has fought ADCC style rule set for jiu-jitsu. Like this is a very MMA oriented jiu-jitsu here. Will Masvidal want to jump in that guard to finish the job? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think Masvidal wants any part of the ground in this fight at all, man. And I, I do. I mean, it's telling. He even said, if I can keep this fight on the ground, on the feet, mm -hmm. I will find success. But I mean, you, you know, you don't want to jump into any guard, mm -hmm. especially when you've had 
uh, failures against wrestlers or against yeah. ground oriented fighters in the past. I think he wants to stay as far away from that. Do you think so too? I think so because I think if he does get taken down, you're going to see a look on his face and expression of here we go again. Last mm-hmm. four fucking fights, bro. Come on. Here we go again. We're doing this? Really? All right, man. None of these dudes want to fight. And maybe that's why the strikers, the OG strikers that are kind of trickling out, having more success doing boxing, kickboxing and stuff, but not quite mixed martial arts, brother. So um, talk to me about this odd, man. Plus four or five for the prop bet. Plus 40, uh, 450. Excuse me. I don't, I don't My words didn't work right there. For both fighters, plus 450 TKO prop. That's very surprising to me, and that doesn't really make sense. Why are we not jumping on this plus 450 TKO from Osvidal? Yeah, I'm, for me, strictly, Derek, it has to do... Well, it's hard because on paper, you're right, but it has to do a little bit of that age and that mm-hmm. hunger, I think it is. If if we see fighters like Hamzat Chemaev, although then I think about it, man, Gilbert, Dern, Gilbert Burns got dropped with mm-hmm. a jab by uh by Kamaru Usman so I don't know I don't know why that 450 is there for for uh Gilbert Burns I can see why you're asking why we're not jumping on that 450 for Masvidal I think both of these guys could knock each other out but I feel like it's way more likely for Masvidal to happen unless we're talking about a uh a, a ground and pound TKO finish for Burns then maybe but I don't know how do you see that I see it as ludicrous and i think that if you're a masvidal better you jump on that plus 450 tko because i don't really see him winning any other way the decision is going to be tough the submission come on what are we talking about um i look at it like this masvidal is very good defensively in terms of being able to avoid getting submitted being able to avoid the the ultimate finish job but you're going to get controlled and you're going to get stuck there right so i see a gilbert burns boring decision victory i do see that in the cards man this dude wants it he wants that title shot that's how i see the path to victory if you're masvidal better jump on the tko if you're gilbert burns better i jump on the submission or the decision i think the decision is a little more likely i think it's going to be hard to finish masvidal um and i'll let the cat out the bag man that's where i'm going here gilbert burns give me a decision win i don't feel spectacular about it i don't feel bet the house type money on gilbert burns right here because i think masvidal can surprise us but i do like the decision how you see it yeah, definitely. If you're a Masvidal better, look out for that early TKO, early round one, early round two TKO come from Masvidal, man. But personally, I'm with you, Derek. I think the more likely outcome right here is submission or, de- or uh, decision from Gilbert Burns. And since you're going decision, man, I'm going to I'm gonna cover our odds on those prop bets because we need a little help there. And I'm going <laughs> submission round two Gilbert Burns. Sheesh, man. And let me actually take a look right here because we are in the camp here, I believe, of doing very unruly things when it comes down to predictions <laughs> for fighters. So Masvidal, let's see, in terms of the losses, Masvidal has never lost via submission in the UFC. That's not true. He did get submitted once with that inverted triangle. It's been many, many years. I think that was literally the last submission loss that he had, was that? Unless it ended in a TKO. Oh, no, that was Toby Amada. Oh, that was Bellator. That was Bellator. Makes sense. UFC, never been submitted. Well, there you go. We'll see what happens right there, but we rolled up with Gilbert Dorino Burns. 